dialogue and not talk about this, we have to deal with this. If we don't get the financial issues of Victor Valley College done, Victor Valley College is not going to be here. First of all, let's just take a look at the big numbers, all right? Uh, we got X budget, um, money that we're going to be receiving from the state government programs, whatever we're going to receive. That's down $20 million from what it was just a few years ago. So we've already made substantial movement in that, in that direction. To cut any more at this time would be difficult. I think, that, I think what has to happen um, is that we have to find a way to um, graduate more um, two-year graduates, AA graduates, um, increase that dramatically. And we need to do that with the, and I, I probably will be uh, misquoted on this, but when I say serious students, by that I mean a student who comes to the college and starts the process of getting their two-year AA. There's a plan in place with a counselor, with the school, and that the student will move forward based on that plan, which means instead of taking six years to graduate, they may do it in two or three. And I think that's one area. I know that's difficult on a lot of students, and I know a lot of students can't do that because of their backgrounds and, and just their personal circumstances. So, so that's a real challenge. Um, we've got to graduate more certificate students, automotive, airframe, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, aer aer aeronautical programs, um, math programs, um, uh, we, um, earth sciences, which is we have a huge earth sciences program where we have partners in doing that. Um, the, 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 the hospital program, we have three hospitals mm -hmm. that we're working with. And we supply students to the hospital and they reimburse us for those students going through school. And uh, those, those are great graduates. They generally do a great job, are very talented. And they're just a whole host of programs that I'm not really bringing up. So the school has a lot of really great things going on. So how do we, how do we make all this work? It's going to be tough in the next few years. So I use the word serious. We need to get through as many students as we can. We'll have to do it with the same number of folks that we have. We won't be able to increase staff. We've increased administration some because we needed to. But now I think we're in balance. And so the number of faculty, the number of, of uh, classified employees, uh, all of these folks are, I think, we're at minimum numbers right now. So now the challenge is to build that back up and to get a greater return on the amount of money that we're spending at the school. Because right now we can't do those other programs we would love to do, but uh, we can't do them. We have to pick those programs that, uh, that manufacturers need, uh, that uh, hospitals need, that um, uh, other schools need because we're teaching educators also. Right, right. So we have a very broad spectrum of what we're teaching. So that's what we got to do. It's just so it's a challenge. Mr. Brady, what do you believe the role of the board is? The most important role that the board plays is the selection of a president superintendent. From there, the second most important is to determine those goals and, 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 and those things that we want the president superintendent to accomplish during the year. Um, so the some people believe that you can take your own personal agendas and try to work them on in. Um, I had a couple of agenda items that I felt were really important. I felt that, 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 that cameras were really important, so we got that taken care of. But the most important role that we do is, is, is to hire the president superintendent. Then the, the, then the administration and the employees work for him. He works for the board. Uh, we help to define policy. Uh, we approve policy. We approve policy changes. But uh, our most important role is to hire the uh, president. The role of the board is um, fairly broad. It's not micromanagement in the sense of um, you need to do something at the college or you need to take care of this or take care of that. It's not that at all. Um, what it is is policy, and policy is what drives the organization. Another component is programs. The board has to sign off and agree to program changes or program upgrades, et cetera. So, and then the third component of that is the facility itself. So there's just a lot to it. It's, just, it's, not, it's not a simple job. It is challenging, but it's also rewarding because the end result 
if, if the board is doing its job properly, that the organization will move for, forward smoothly. It will find the necessary resources it needs. It will be able to gain the programs it needs to get. Um, and there's multiple places for those programs to come from, the government, the state, uh, the private, charitable, uh, foundation, a number of places where, where, where funds can come from. But this is a synergy problem, and it's not a problem, I shouldn't say problem, but it's a synergy s situation. So the, 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 the whole thing has to work together, and the board has to be part of that. We'll be right back. Our community is brought to you by Iwanzak Law Firm, the Victor Valley's top lawyers for serious legal problems. And by Law Dog Productions, Tales of the Frontier, Family Television Entertainment. Here's another question. How will you ensure the college will create a long-term budget that does not rely on unrestricted reserves to cover its present deficits? Giles, I, I remember in, um, I, I graduated in 1979 and 1981. I had the privilege of working for three very uh, successful men in Santa Barbara in, in, in a very successful real estate company. And, and we had to put together a zero-based budget that year. I think that we're almost going to need to do some similar to that over here. There's some philosophical issues with the short-term and long-term budget, and there are some very serious differences in the short-term reserves, our annual reserves and what we should have. Uh, the ACCJC would like us to have a minimum of 5% reserve per year. Uh, some people in, in the industry, I've talked to Dr. O'Hearn about this, said probably a 10% because I think the times are going to be tough for a while. The challenge is that, that the state's going through a very serious downturn. I believe the state's going to go through this downturn for the next seven to nine years. Um, I, I, I believe that, that Prop 30 is probably not going to pass. We're going to take another $3 million hit. Uh, we have some long-term reserves in a fund called the Guaranteed Investment Contract. It's, it's called the GIC. Um, there are some philosophical differences on whether we should be using that to balance the budget, and I'm absolutely totally opposed to it. Um, I, I felt I, I, I did my homework. I talked to the gentleman that said it on shortly after getting to BBC. And the ACCJC, when they came back in their initial report, spent six pages talking about the fiscal instability of the college, the fact that we should not be using the GIC. Um, I just attended this this past Thursday, the, the meeting that, that Tracy Davis put on with the Academic Senate. And the Academic Senate is really a, a very powerful group. It's a, a, a cross-section of the CTA and the CSEA, uh, the, the AFT. And they put together a document that's really kind of a living document called the Education Master Plan. And in there, they even talk about the fact that we need to ensure we don't use that. The challenge is this. This, this is real life. There's one thing for a couple to say, we're never going to tap our savings. It's another thing when they're out on a Saturday and they see that real beautiful car they're looking at, and they say, you know what, if we only take ten grand out of that $40,000, we will put it back. Well, I, I think the temptation here is to say, we're going to use the GIC, we're going to use our long-term reserves to balance the budget. I'm absolutely opposed to that. Um, I believe that, 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 that one of the people running for this position may believe differently, that, that we should use it today. Um, I don't think that's prudent. I think that we have to run this like a business. I think the taxpayers expect us to be running like a business. And I think that we need to be held accountable like a business. And I can tell you that, that if, if, if you were to go to the bank with our financials and say, we're going to use the, 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 the reserves, the banker wouldn't give you a loan. It, it, it just wouldn't happen. So um, I have voted against the budget twice. And I have voted against the budget because I, I just don't think that we are as prudent as we could be um, although, you know, they've cut 12, 12 million dollars and they've cut five in the last two years. Uh, so they they made some prudent moves, but in, in my business, we've had to cut a lot more to survive. And, and I think that, you know, again, I, I say we're all in this together. I mean, we're all in this together. How will you ensure the college will create a long-term budget that does not rely on unrestricted reserves to cover its deficits? Well. The first thing I'm not going to do is to ask for uh, concessions with, with labor costs. That is not the first thing that I'm going to do. I do believe most every business out there can run most efficiently, more efficiently, and, and schools are a business. They're not your usual business of land or, 
or uh, RVs or cars. Uh, it's a more important business. We, e we educate children to take over running the, the most important, the most powerful country that has ever existed in the history of the planet. And if those kids are not prepared for that, then we failed in, in our mission. So it's not just a, any business, it's the most important of businesses. And teaching is the most important of all professions. That land and RV is kind of poking you right there. Oh, they get hard. Well, that's good. All right, you'll, you'll, you'll take that out then. Yeah, you, you betcha I won't. <laughs> Just try not to snort water out your nose. Ready. How do you plan to resolve the $29,850,000 projected cumulative deficit in the next four years without compromising VBC students or cutting more classes? There has been steps already taken to, um, to bring that, that deficit spending down. And I will continue with that, okay? It, solvency is the number one thing financially. The institution has to survive. All of us have a vested interest in that. So um, the, 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 uh, those on the uh, right and those on the left will find common ground in making sure that that institution survives. It's in our best interest to make sure that happens. How do you plan to correct the present cumulative deficit? Well, unrestricted reserves, again, the classification and the red line that, that I was, the point I was going after was that it, we do have 5%. That, that's the limit. We should not violate that. If we violate that 5%, then again, we have accreditation coming back to us and saying that we're not following through on the policies that, we, that we've established. Now, you should know that every school district has this. And some school districts have a larger number than we do. Um, we thought about raising it, but this doesn't seem to be the appropriate time to do that. So it's, it's very important that we understand that the 5% reserve is basically untouchable. Now, the complication has been that um, we had other money that came in through different ways. And um, my simplest term to describe it, which is that there was bricks and mortar money, and which means that money that it was designated specifically for building stuff, to, you know, creating stuff, uh, which is something we've been working on for a long time. Uh, the bricks and mortar money is, is different than the bond money. But then the complexity of that is the bond money also does bricks and mortars and only does bricks and mortars. Mm -hmm. So now the money that we have repaid the district for projects that it built on its own with its own money and its own loans uh, is now on the table. And I think that's the money that people keep talking about. It's that bricks and mortar money that was originally bricks and mortar that through the bond became uh, uh, general fund money. And that's, and that's the amount that keeps popping up. And there is a certain amount of that left. So spending that is, we have to resist that as much as possible because spending that is the last piece of our reserves. And for us to survive as a college, we must have reserves. We've got to be able to We've got to be able to be there when the state says, yes, Victor Valley College, we owe you this money, but we're not paying you till next year. We're not paying you for six months. It's that kind of thing. You know, the money's yours, the state has it, but you cannot use it. You have to use your own sources of funds in order to bridge that period of time from, from the time they say they owe it to you and don't give it to you, and then you have to fund yourself during that period of time. That is a very difficult thing, and that's where we sit, and that's why we constantly keep talking about that reserve money. It's very important, if you will, it, it's, it's our savings that when things go bad, we do have a little bit, 